Funding for Chasing Frames is provided by Nikon and On One Software. What's the chance they're gonna jump in my face? What are they doing? <laughs> That's quite a call. This is awesome. Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey. I've traveled the world for the last 16 years as a professional photographer, photographing faces and documenting stories. Join me in our new series, Chasing Frames, where we learn from some incredibly inspiring people who work hard to transform lives, protect our planet, and rescue those in need. Today we're gonna to spend the day with some amazing lemurs and learn from the people who spend their time caring for this endangered species. Okay, so we're gonna go through the lemur forest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's our natural habitat enclosure. Okay, and uh, it's about 70 acres, you said? The total acreage of the property is, okay. but each plot is divided up. So the one we're about to go into is about four acres in size, okay. and it has two different lemur species. Oh, fantastic, okay, and it's the ringtail lemurs. Mm -hmm and the cockerels shafak. Cockerels shafak, mm -hmm. okay. And this is, is this true that this is the largest collection of lemurs outside of Madagascar? Mm -hmm. Both in number and number of species. Wow. How many species are there? 15 species here, 15 but there species. are about 100 in Madagascar. So there's still quite a large number of lemur species you will not find unless you go to Madagascar in person. And that's one of the benefits of photography here or research here. Uh, researchers can spend you know, months in Madagascar and get very little usable data if yeah. for behavioral research. And also the presence of people can impact the behavior that they're looking for mm. in those remote regions. So they do their natural, normal behaviors without that fear of humans being around them. So they can be really valuable for researchers. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's so cool. Why Duke? Why here? Why Duke Forest? Oh, that's a big question. But uh, basically it started back in 1966. There was a researcher up at Yale who was studying the connection between primate genetics and their behavior. And um, he wanted, I think there, had, there were some academic decisions along with it, but he also wanted a more temperate climate so that he could have more of his collection of primates outside. And so basically he got in touch with Duke Biology, partnered up with some of the professors and started the Duke University Primate Center. Uh, we originally started entirely focused on research. Now, over the course of the last 51 years, we've changed our focus to include conservation, education, and our, we are still very research founded, but it's all non-invasive research, nothing that would do any lasting damaging effects or anything. And about how many lemurs are out here? Uh, we have around 230 lemurs. Um, and we have around 10 to 20 infants born every year with the species survival plans and around 10 to 20 transfers between other zoos coming to live here or going to live somewhere else just okay. to maintain the healthy genetics and, you know, basically like the lemur dating service to make sure everyone <laughs> has a companion or if they're set for a breeding pair, we have an appropriate match. Apparently, a new lemur baby was just born. She was a total surprise. They found out that her mama was pregnant during just a routine physical exam and everyone was just over the moon because besides being super cute, they said she weighed about the same as a deck of playing cards. It's also a really big deal because lemurs are the most endangered mammals on earth. This new little one, Marie, they named her Marie, is one of the most critically endangered type of lemurs. So her birth really means a lot. So ring-tailed lemurs are kind of like the poster child for all of the lemurs. Even though there's, a, there's about 100 species of lemur in Madagascar, nine times out of 10 when you tell people the word lemur, they picture a ring-tailed lemur. And it's pretty understandable. I mean, they have really distinctive striping on their tails. They're just really adorable if you look at them. They're really charismatic. So I'd love to switch to the 105 on this, but I'm concerned that the second I do that, they're gonna go somewhere and then I'm not gonna have the shot I wanted. I wasn't, there you go. The main photographer here at Duke Lemur Center is David Herring, who gets to see these amazing creatures every day. He's photographed a huge variety of these species of lemurs in some really fun ways, including the crown lemurs and mongoose, the fat-tailed dwarfs, the blue-eyed blacks, the eye eyes, the gray mouse, um, the red ruffed lemur, and my personal favorite, the pygmy slow loris. So cool. Look at this guy with his paws crossed over his nether part. Hey, I like your sitting posture. 
That is awesome. When it gets nice and sunny out, ringtails do a very unique behavior among animals. We call it lemur yoga. They'll kind of sit back and put their arms out almost on their knees and do a little sun worshiping pose. Oh, that's awesome. Because I really want this portrait. And he's got opening his mouth. It looks like a monkey. So I love, so they not only they leap, they leap on their back feet and then they use this like, they use their, their hands. Hands? <laughs> We're going hands? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Even though they look very different than us, these guys are primates. They right, right. Very small, fuzzy, primates yeah. with elongated, wet noses. Which right. Which is a clue that they're such ancestral mammals to <sighs> our family tree. Um, but yes, they have hands, they have feet, they have nails, all those things. Uh, the cockerel shifak in particular are bipedal like us. They stay on two feet. Yeah. But their hips are kind of splayed outwards so that when they leap between trees, they can easily grab on and catch. It's called vertical leaping and clinging. They stay upright when they're jumping. So on the ground, it looks really kind of like a dance. So when they bounce, they kind of move sideways rather than one foot in front of the other like we would. Yeah. This is so cool. Oh, sorry, I did it. Darn it. But one of the things you don't want to do is make certain noises to get their attention. And I just did it <laughs> by accident. And I will not do it again. But it's, it's sometimes so easy because you're just used to photographing animals and trying to get their attention. And that's not what you want to do in this situation or in a lot of situations where you have animals out in the wild. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you want to learn more about these lemurs and what you can do to help or find out more photography tips and techniques and what to do after the shot, check us out on our website.